Welcome to Unit 4, which is about data type. So, what is a data type? As stated before, programs handle data, but there are different kinds of data. For example, there is numbers like 1 or 40 or 200, and there is other data like, for example, a text, my name is Stefan. In programming, these different kinds of data are called data types. And it is important to note that depending on the data type, you can choose certain operations. For example, you can multiply integers, you can multiply numbers, but you can't multiply texts. This multiplication of texts is simply not defined. In Python, we do have four primitive data types. The first one is normal numbers, 42, 1, 0, minus 100, something like that. Then we have float numbers, floating point numbers. These are the numbers consisting of a decimal point. The third data type is string. This is all kind of texts, which always starts and end with a quotation mark and consists of letters and digits and special characters like spaces, um, question marks, uh, columns and so on. And finally, we have the data type Boolean, which has two logical values, namely true and false. Python offers a function type and you can always put in a parameter and type gives back the data type of this uh, object. And sometimes it's possible to convert data with casting functions. So you can make a string and convert, take a string and convert it into an integer, at least in some cases. Let's dig into the details. Details, it's showtime. <clears throat> so once again, we have four primitive data types in Python. We have not talked about it yet. So if you run this cell, you can simply see one plus two is three. However, we could only do it um, because we have integer numbers. Integers are those numbers one, two, three, minus a hundred, which do not consist of a decimal point. Then we have decimal numbers, which are from a data type float and which always have this decimal point. So 2.0, because we have a decimal point, is a float data type. We have logical values. These are called Boolean. And we have two values here, either true or false. And there's operations we will see later to work with these Boolean values. And last but not least, we have strings, character strings. You see, for example, hello world. A string always starts with a quotation mark and ends with a quotation mark. And all the characters in between, these are part of the string. And you cannot only have um, letters like H and ABC, but you can have as well digits and special characters. We do have a function called type. And if you, for example, in this coding cell run this uh, coding cell, then you can see type 42 gets back as an output class integer. We're not discussing exactly, exactly what a class is, but you can see we can differentiate here. We can, if we have an input, can get back if it is integer, if it is float, if it is Boolean or if it is string. So type always helps you to find out what kind of data type is currently available. Let's first have a look on integers. So what you can see here is um, once again, we have, we can print the type, yeah, which is integer. And you can see integers in Python can really become large. Yeah, so x equals to one and several zeros behind it, and it's still an integer. And even if we square it and print it out, the number gets bigger, what you can see in this line, 
yeah, um, it's still class integer. As long as we have a number and no decimal point, we have an integer. If you do have a decimal point, then we are in the world of float numbers. Yeah, so you can see here once again we do a typing. Yeah, we specify the type and you see 0.1 and 0.0 both are float. Now you could argue 0.0 is the same as 0, 0.0 .0 is the same as 0. However, from a data type point of view, it's not. Even if the values are the same, in this in the very moment you enter this decimal point, you will end up with a float number. There is different ways to, to write um, numbers. For example, here you have this Planck constant, which is write, written in the scientific notation, which actually means 6.63 times 10 by the power of minus 34. So this Planck constant is really small. And you can have the same in the other way, um, one E100, again scientific notation, is 1 times 10 by the power of 100. And this number is simply 1 with 100 zeros and it's called Google. Uh, reminds you to Google, which uh, some people argue is really the basic for the name Google because of the so many web pages that exist. Important for us right now, um, if you have this E, the scientific notation, you always end up with float numbers. Scientific notation means you end up with a float number. So what are the operations you can do? Um, you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and there is three types of divisions you can go for. So if you see these seven divided by three, you're coming to different results. With a normal division, you will end up with 2.333 and something. If you do this, what is called integer division, then the result is two. You can simply say it is the result which is before the decimal point. So if you divide, if you do an integer division, then the result is always of data type um, integer. You have simply to use two of these slashes. And then we have modulo. Actually, modulo is quite often used in uh, computer science. It's used quite often. Um, what is modulo? So if you have done um, the division in your first class in the primary school, then uh, 7 divided by 3 has been 2 and there is a rest of 1. So the 2 has been the result of the integer division and the rest 1, the 1, that's really what is modulo. And uh, again, this modulo is used quite often and it's of data type um, integer. Finally, we have this exponentiation and you cannot only exponentiate with integers, you can use exponentiation with um, fractions. So here you have 2 by the power of 0.5, 2 by the power of 1 half, which is the same as the square root of 2. Yeah, you see this result 1.414. Question. It's quite interesting to observe what kind of uh, data type certain operations run into. So if you have this integer value, you can see print type integer value, it's of course int. Again, with the float, it's float. If you combine both, so if you add an integer to a float value, then the combined value is of float. Yeah? And you can see here some more, even if we have this fractional part, which is equal to zero, just as we have this uh, 0, 0.0, as we have this decimal point, this is of type float. And here's the same. If we divide with the normal division three by one, and uh, we end up basically with the result three, then the result is of data type three, simply by definition, this uh, normal division always ends up in a float, so the result is not 3, it's 3.0 as we have an integer, as we have a float number as a result. 
Same in here. So uh, these numbers are both actually could be integers, but as these scientific notation always as a float number, the result of this multiplication is float as well. If you work with float, if you work with data type float, then you have to be um, careful. What you can see in the following example. So if you would add 0.1 and 0.2, of course the result is 0.3. However, you see there is a little deviation from what you have expected. Why? It's simply a problem of rounding fractional numbers. So uh, this really can happen if uh, that some result is not as expected. And if you usually run with fractional numbers, then maybe uh, the values don't have to be exact, but sometimes they have to. And you have to take care that you do not run into a trap here. Same in here. So if you first take the square root and then you um, do the power by two, you would expect that the result is the same as before. But again, you see by rounding problems, um, the result is not exactly two. Yeah? So if you're more interested, have a look in the Python documentation why exactly it's happening. It is because we use bits internally and the rounding effects can lead to problem here. Let's go for Boolean values. Again, we have argued there is actually two values which are true and false. And we have three operators. Not changes the true into false and the false into true. So it always do the reverse one. And checks if you have two um, Boolean values, if both are true, then the result is true as well. If only one is uh, false, then the result is false and vice versa. Or if you have two um, Boolean values which are, which are combined using the operator OR, then the result is true if only one is true or if one or two are true, um, true and uh, the only result is false if both of these, uh, of these um, variables are false. You can do a little exercise here. So maybe you stop the video and first prognose what will be the result of false and false, not false. And if you have assigned the um, values true and false to the variables a and b, what will be the outcome of these print statements? Of course, I can run it. So if you would like to do it on your own, stop the video and then you see um, the complex one, maybe the last one, A and B or true and false, results in false. I'm not going to the details. String. String, as said before, is a false primitive data type. A string always starts and end, ends with quotation marks, you can see here and there. And um, what you can do is you can run some operations. For example, you can add strings and you can multiply a string with uh, integer. And you see the um, difference. Hello world. Here we have two arguments in these uh, print statements. Here we have one which is the addition of two strings and here we have the multiplication of the one string with uh, the of the one string with uh, an integer number. Let's really point out where do we have differences here. So if we say a, a equal to one, b equal to two, and we print a plus b, then we add plus b, then we add two integers. Now, if we make these two numbers strings. You can still add them, but the result is not the string 3. The result is 1, 2. It's a string. So these two numbers, which are no numbers anymore, but which are strings, are concatenated. They are printed one after the other. So here you can see it's of um, important to see if uh, there is a 
one as an integer or if there is one a digit, a part of a, of a string. The result, if you do certain operations, is really important. There are a few methods which you can run on strings. For example, you can run the method upper, which turns each character, each letter into the upper version. Yeah? Or you can replace certain strings, uh, substrings like hi into ma. So if I run this, you see the first one, a upper, um, leads to Ramones, all in upper letters. And here, by replacing hitch by taking high hitchhiker and replacing hi by ma, we get matchmaker. So, what happens in here if we have this input? Please insert a number A. Please add your... Um, we could have input... Um, please insert a number B. And uh, then we add both and print the result A plus B. Yeah. So I'm putting in one, two, three, and five, four, five, six, and you'll see um, the result is one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe not the one what you expected. Why? If you use input, then the data type which is given back is always of data type string. So you cannot simply get integers. You have to first convert these numbers for, sorry, you have to first convert these strings into numbers. And to do so, there are these casting operators. Yeah? The, these are made to do conversions. So here you have functions, int, float, bool, and str string. Um, and if you enter a certain value in there, yeah, then you can see int, and you enter a string in here, then it is changed, it is converted into the data type string. However, not all type of conversions are possible. So if you have a string which con consists just of digits, no problem. However, if the string would be ABC, then you would run into an error. Let's have a look in here. Yeah, so here we have our string hello, we have an integer 2019. If you would like to concatenate it, we first have to make the 2019, which is an integer, we have to convert it into a string. We do this by using this casting function str, put the i, I as an argument, the variable as an argument, and now we can, can concatenate it. So what's happening if you use bool of zero? Yeah? And then this is simply by definition, that's always false. Yeah? Bool one would end up in true. Yeah? Bool 123 would be true as well. So if you convert an integer into a Boolean value, if the value is, sorry, if the integer is zero, it ends up in false. All other integers will be true. Yeah? Let's have a look for, for example, minus two. Yeah? And you see it's true as well. Yeah, it's only the zero which becomes false. If you then, then go the other way around, so bool 3 becomes um, true and we make an integer again out of it, then it's always 1. So if you, sorry, if you convert a boolean value into an integer, it always becomes a 0 or 1 depending on if it is false or true. Sim similar for characters. If you have whatever type of characters and you would like to convert it into a Boolean value, then it's always uh, true. Unless, well, we can put in some more text, it's still true, you can see it here. Unless um, the string is completely empty. So even if there's one space uh, available, it's not empty, now it's empty. And now the conversion runs into false. So what do we have to do if we uh, would like to convert and uh, the, convert the, the output of the function input? So what you do is 
age uh, eq input. Yeah, we would like to ask for your age, yeah, put it in the variable, and then we convert the result into an integer. That's what we're doing in here. Yeah. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm entering my age. Oh, it's a little bit too much. Anyhow, it's of class integer. However, there's a problem. If some person does not put an integer in here, but some text, uh, the program will crash. It runs into an error because it's a value error because we have tried to convert a literal QWE, which is not convertible into an integer. So some conversions are simply not possible. In here, we have uh, had two statements. The first one gets the input, the second one converts it. An alternative solution for this could be what is called nesting functions. So we have the inner function input, which is the same as before, and the output of this function is put into the outer function int. This is called nesting. It basically the result is the same as before. Yeah? So if I run this code, again I put it in, you see I'll get one, two, three, and I get the type. Um, but um, some like prefer these nested type before, because it's more compact. For beginners, it is maybe better to use this alternative code with two different statements, which maybe is a little bit more clear. But as this is often used, and you will find it again and again and again, at least you should know how this works. Finally, there are, finally, there are two exercises. Please do them on their own. So, what you have learned in this unit. There are data types, and you have to be aware of data types, because um, the operations you can run depend on the data type, the variables you have. Python supports four primitive data types, which are integer, float, boolean, and string. And there are casting operations, as you could see, which for example helps you to convert an input, which is of data type string, into an integer. However, not all type of conversions are possible. 